be there. Over the course of this and the next 35 lectures, I hope I'll be able to convey to you my enthusiasm for Britain and to point out some of the best places you should visit when you have a chance to go. Even if you're just an armchair traveller, stay with me and learn about the history and culture of an island nation that has played an outsized role on the global stage. Britain is the land where the Industrial Revolution began and where many of the ideas central to our world originated, including ideas about democracy, individual rights, freedom of the press, and the rule of law. For at least a thousand years, its most articulate and literate people have been keeping detailed records. And for a thousand years before that, it was swept by the great movements of peoples across the ancient world. Centuries of internal peace and a widespread interest in preserving the nation's heritage have ensured that evidence of all the ages of British life can still be found impressed on the landscape. It is possible to see superb examples of the ancient civilizations that lived there, including Maiden Castle, a great Iron Age hill fortress in the southwestern county of Dorset, and Stonehenge, the mysterious stone circle and earthwork in nearby Wiltshire. Roman conquest in the first century of the Christian era also made a vivid and lasting impression. Best of the Roman remains is Hadrian's Wall, near the current border of England and Scotland. It marked the boundary between the Britons Rome had subdued and the wild men who lived further north. Equally impressive are the Roman baths in the aptly named spa town of Bath in southwestern England. Its fashionable revival in the 18th century and its appearance in books like Jane Austen's Persuasion make Bath a popular and very worthwhile visitor's destination. When the Romans left Britain, the country fragmented into petty chiefdoms and was invaded by Danish, Viking and Anglo-Saxon tribesmen from Northern Europe. This was the era of the legendary King Arthur. Several places in England with scattered and picturesque ruins claim to be the original Camelot. Eventually, the Anglo-Saxons formed seven kingdoms, the Heptarchy, and fought with one another for supremacy. Each wanted to become the Bretwalder, or King of the Britons. It's not quite so easy to find Anglo-Saxon vestiges in Britain as Roman ones. They're usually smaller and more fragile. On the other hand, an incredible Anglo-Saxon funeral longboat and treasure hoard found at Sutton Hoo in the 1930s is one of the great archaeological sensations of the 20th century. Maybe not quite the equal of Tutankhamun's tomb in Egypt, but not far off. Once we reach the High Middle Ages in British history, the historical record and the variety of objects still visible today swells immensely. Front and centre stand literally thousands of medieval churches. There are so many that some are shabby and neglected, even though they're seven, eight or nine hundred years old. Many have been extensively renovated over the centuries, but they still give us vivid testimony of the powerful faith of Catholic England between the Norman conquest of 1066 and the Reformation of the 16th century. As a child, I was a choir boy at All Saints Church in Michelover, built in the early 1300s, extensively renovated in the Victorian era, wonderfully attractive, and yet too familiar to most English men and women to draw even a passing glance. One of the quintessential experiences of travel in England is to pass through the great oak door of a rural parish church like All Saints and into the musty interior where a brass eagle lectern holds the Bible, where stained glass windows retell biblical stories, and where old grave markers commemorate the passing of village squires through the centuries. The great cathedrals overshadow the parish churches and draw the lion's share of visitors' attention. They nearly all date from the era 1100 to 1500, and I'll have much to say about them in the lectures that follow. The most famous of all are Westminster Abbey in London, where generations of kings and queens have been crowned, and Canterbury Cathedral.